If you're a landscape photographer, you ought to have a print up on the wall of some of your beautiful work. Uh, I think that every landscape photographer deserves to have their work printed and put on the wall, whether it be in their home or in your client's home, in your friend's home, your family's home, whoever it is, I think it should go on the wall because the photos you're taking, I am sure they are just beautiful. Now, in today's video, I wanna show you guys exactly how I go about resizing and sharpening for print. This is a super important topic because I'm sure you have all seen prints that just look awful and they're not sharp and there's just many problems with it. So I wanna make sure that you guys have beautiful prints and if you follow along with this video, you definitely will. So um, I'm gonna be showing you guys exactly how to do this and on one resize. So I'm gonna be opening my image in Lightroom. I'm gonna be putting the image from Lightroom to on one resize and I'm gonna be resizing and sharpening in on one. Now there's 5,000 different ways to resize and sharpen an image, but this is by far the easiest one in my opinion, which is why I'm gonna show you how to do it this way. However, it will require you to own the On One software. Uh, you can either purchase the On One software as a whole package, or you can purchase the individual plugins. I have a discount code that I put uh, down below, and I will also put it up here on the screen, as well as with a link down below for you to go pick these things up. I highly recommend it. You won't regret it. You'll be using these every time you go to print, and it's really gonna make your images look great. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in there. So the first thing that you'll wanna do is navigate to your image in Lightroom, or if you use a different photo editor, navigate to it there. Um, but I'm gonna be showing you how to pull this out of Lightroom and into uh, what I use, which is the on one resize. So I've already edited my photo here. I just made some minor tweaks in Lightroom. Probably isn't a photo that I would actually get printed, but I thought it made a good example for um, our photo today that I'm gonna be showing you how I would go about resizing and sharpening. So what I wanna do here is while I'm selected on the photo, I'm in the develop module, but I wanna go up to photo. I wanna go down to edit in, and then I've got all these options here. Now you probably don't have as many options as I do. I have all of these because these are all plugins that I've installed. Um, but if you get this plugin, it is called On One Resize 2021. Um, even better yet, if you purchase the whole On One package, you will have all of the On One uh, options here. Now I have 2020 and 2021 because I haven't went back and uninstalled the other ones, but you would get 2021 if you were to purchase it today. So I'm going to use on one resize 2021. And I'm just going to click that. And it's going to give me some options here. So I want to edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. That's totally fine. Um, and you have a choice in your file format. I would recommend doing PSD or TIFF. Um, either way, uh, I usually just stick with PSD because it's the default, but TIFF would work as well. Um, don't do JPEG because JPEG, you will start to kind of lose some details in your image. So don't recommend that. I recommend staying in Adobe RGB for most printers, unless you're printing it on your own and you know that you want one of the other options. But generally speaking, just stick with Adobe RGB. Uh, we're gonna go 16 bits per component uh, for the bit depth and resolution of 300. We're gonna go ahead and hit edit here and it is now gonna open up the On One software where it will allow me to resize and sharpen this image for print. Okay, so now that that is open, you can see that I'm in On One Resize here and my screen has a ton of different options. I'm gonna kinda walk you through exactly what all these options do and which ones you need to pay attention to. So starting from the left, this gives you presets. So these presets are great to use if you're printing on your own. Maybe you know that you're printing on a Canon printer with matte paper. You can use their preset, you can pick the size, you can do it all. Uh, it's kind of an all-in-one, um, I guess, resizing and sharpening formula that they give you there. Uh, however, I do not print on my own. I go ahead and send my images off to a print lab, which I assume probably 90 plus percent of you guys will be doing the same. So I'm actually gonna do it all by myself. So I'm not gonna worry about these presets on the left side here. And I can click this button down here, um, which will hide that to make my image a little bigger, which is always nice when your image is a little bit larger. So now I can go through on the left side and go kind of straight down the line. So. The first thing that I wanna do is go through and go to document size here. I'm not gonna mess with the pixel dimensions. That just shows me how many pixels my image is. I'm not too concerned about that. I am concerned about the document size. Now it may be by default in pixels when you start, but put it into inches if you're printing unless you speak in pixels, but I'm assuming most of you guys don't. So we're gonna put it in inches here. Now let's say that I wanted to upsize this image um, to maybe, 40 by 60, so I'm just gonna put in 40 on the height, 
and the width will automatically snap uh, 59.99. My image was slightly cropped on one side, so it's basically a 40 by 60 uh, resolution at 300 pixels per inch. Now I'm going to go down to sharpening. I'm going to make sure to check the box here. And I always like hitting the preset to sharpen for print. Um, that changes the type of sharpening to progressive, which is what we want for print. And then I can actually zoom in on my image because what you'll notice if I increase the amount, um, you can slightly see it when we're zoomed out, but not as much as when you zoom in. So what I like to do up here on the zoom is I like to change the zoom to 100. And I can double click here and go to 100. Now what that does is it's gonna show me the image at actual size um, for whichever um, document size I have, so 40 by 60. So the cool thing about this is it's a way for me to proof my image as if it was 40 by 60, because I'm looking at a smaller portion of the image on the screen when we're at 100 on the zoom. I'm gonna show you guys another example in just a second where my photo is gonna be much smaller and at 100 on the zoom, the photo is almost gonna fill the whole screen. Um, so anyways, back to sharpening here. Uh, I like to scroll up to a spot that is maybe a high contrast area, such as on the edge of this mountain here, um, where the mountain meets the sky as well as the snow meets the rock. And I just like to adjust my settings. Now, typically for landscape photography, I adjust my detail all the way to 100 and I increase the amount from there. But you can see that I could easily overdo it. Now, I want to avoid getting all of this noise on the edges like you can see now. So that's where the threshold comes in. I'm gonna drop my amount just a little bit. The threshold basically allows us to control um, how selective this is. Uh, as you can see there, it says it focuses sharpening on just the edges. That's a great way to explain it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag. Usually I find that between five and 15 is a good place to go, um, but sometimes I will go more depending on the image. Let's go ahead and go about 15 on this one and then I will reduce the sharpening. And I'm just gonna to toggle this. So now you can see what that's done is it's really kind of helped bring out the edges without adding too much noise to the edges, which is exactly what I wanna do. Now what I like to do is I like to sit back at my computer screen because I'm imagining and I'm looking at this image um, on a, whether it's paper, canvas, whatever it is, I wanna imagine that I'm looking at this image from maybe five feet away, maybe eight feet away. So I actually sit all the way back from my computer screen and I look and I scroll around and I just look at how the image looks. Again, we're at 100 on the zoom. So basically if I had a computer screen that was 40 by 60 and we put 100 on the zoom, it would perfectly fill the screen. But because my computer screen is smaller, it's zooming in. So you can always go back uh, to the regular zoom. I just click command zero and toggle this. But the problem is that doesn't really show me that much information because my print is gonna be so much larger than what I'm looking at on the screen right now. Which again is why I like to go to 100 on the zoom here. And just scroll around the image and toggle the sharpening and see what the sharpening is done. And I think it's looking pretty good. Sometimes it does take a second to render, especially when it's larger. I've already resized this to larger size, so it is taking a second. I'm really liking how this is kind of bringing out the trees. So there's one more thing that you can do that's really helpful here, which is to protect the shadows or the highlights. And basically what that's gonna do is it's going to prevent your photo from sharpening in the darkest shadows or the brightest highlights. On this image, it's probably not gonna do a whole lot um, because I don't have any really bright highlights, but uh, this is nice for spots like this little piece of snow here. You can see that's gotten a little over sharpened. It is one of the bright highlights. If I slide this, you can see that it is not being sharpened anymore. So as a general rule of thumb, I like to slide these both to about 10, but I, of course, with every image, I like to look at the image and make sure that um, exactly what I'm doing is looks good. So 10 is a good place to start, and then you can look around from there. This image doesn't have any really deep, dark shadows, but if it did, I would probably consider sliding the shadows a little bit further because I don't want my bright highlights or my dark shadows sharpened too terribly much. Uh, that's just gonna cause the image to have a lot more noise than I want. So that looks great. And now what I wanna do is I'm just gonna go down here and hit export. And it's gonna to prepare to export and a little dialog box is gonna pop up, which is going to allow me to pick some settings when I export this photo. Okay, so now you can see a little dialog box 
pops up and it allows me to choose what I want the image to save as. So a lot of printers only accept JPEG images, which is totally fine if you want to export this as a JPEG. At this point, the file is not going to be opened and manipulated anymore. This one's gonna go straight to the printer and um, come straight out. So there's not gonna be a lot of extra saving and manipulating on the image. However, it's generally a good thing to print in TIFF because TIFF is going to retain all of the quality even if the image is open and edited it again. Um, so you could go ahead and hit TIFF, which is usually what I do. Again, I'm gonna keep it in Adobe RGB 1998. And this is where I'm gonna export it to, just to my desktop. If you wanted to rename it, you could check this box here and rename it to whatever you wanted. Um, but that is how I would go about exporting this photo and then I could upload it to uh, whatever print lab I wanna use. So I wanna show you guys just one more thing here. Now, if I went up to my document size and let's say I wanted to print uh, an eight by 12. So I'm gonna go eight on the height and 12 on the width. Now, if I go to zoom 100, you can see that it's gonna zoom in a lot less and now my sharpen doesn't look very good anymore. So this is why, again, I say that you always want to resize first so that then you can zoom correctly because now my sharpening is way over sharpening the edges. So now I might want to reduce the amount um, and just dial this in. And again, now I'm looking at it at zoom 100 as if this was going to print on a very small image. And maybe I'll increase the threshold. And that looks much better. So great example of why you want to change the document size before you sharpen because different document sizes uh, are going to change the sharpening drastically. If you're printing a very large image, you need to do a lot more sharpening than maybe you would on a very small image. So that is looking pretty good. Again, I would just go down to export and go ahead and export this out. So that pretty much wraps up exactly how I go about using uh, this on one resize. It is the best tool in my opinion for uh, resizing and sharpening for print. And it's something that I'm using all the time. Every time I go and print an image, I run it through here and that is exactly how I do it. All right, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for checking out this video. As I always mention, I highly recommend opening an image of your own and following along as you pause and play the video while you do things on your own screen. Uh, I cannot recommend the On One software enough. As I mentioned before, there's a link down below where you can pick up this software uh, as well as a discount code. Uh, you guys will get a little bit of money saved when you purchase it. Uh, so thank you guys so much for checking out this week's video. I look forward to bringing you guys a video next week. As always, please make sure to like and subscribe. Leave a comment if this video worked for you. I'd love to see the images you guys are printing. Thank you guys so much, and we'll see you guys next Monday.